Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I'm in my temporary studio. I'm still working on it. Yeah, these are pretty. 15 and three quarters, 13 and a half, just in case anybody's wondering. These are my, uh, this is actually my PB, Northern Crappie. But anyway, this video is how to find these guys right before winter. This question was actually asked in a Facebook message sent to me about a week ago. So this video was perfect because I just got off the water last week. It's probably gonna be the last open water video that I do until probably mid-January of trying to find these fish in that fall to winter transition. I was trying to find them before ice up because if you can find them right before we start our ice fishing season, they're going to be there for the next two to maybe three weeks if you're lucky. Unfortunately, I filmed the entire video with actually checking the audio on the big camera, this one right here. And uh, you'd think after about three years on YouTube, I'd figure out to plug in the microphone. And uh, it wasn't, it was like halfway plugged in. So the audio sounds like this. Yeah, fortunately, half of the video, I actually had a second camera going, which did pick up audio. So I will be jumping in and out of this video just to kind of walk you through how my afternoon went on the water, trying to find these fish and what I was looking for. And to start off with, when you're trying to find crappie during the fall specifically, you wanna look for that hard to soft bottom transition on your lake, your river, your pond, whatever you're fishing. So for those of you confused to what I just said, hard bottom is sand, gravel, and rock. Soft bottom is silt, muck, and mud. And a lot of times that transition line, that hard bottom, that gravel, that sand, where it meets the silt and the mud and the muck, that transition line is where these crappie will stack up in the fall. In the winter time, they're gonna push out eventually to their deeper water basins where they suspend through most of the winter. Until spring comes around, they're gonna push back shallow. So the goal right now, we're in November, is to try and find them before they push out into their wintering basins. They're probably gonna be stacked up on this hard bottom to soft bottom edge. And in this video, I was trying to find some piece of cover, whether it's a brush pile, a tree, um, maybe it's a rock pile, something to actually concentrate these fish. Because what happens in the fall, when they push out to this contour line of that hard bottom to soft bottom transition, they can really scatter and it can be hard to stay on top of them. So if you can find something that concentrates these fish, it's gonna be a lot easier to keep your boat on them and put more fish in the boat. So when I first went out, just from the boat launch, I knew immediately these fish are pushed out to deeper water, 18 to 20 feet. I saw them suspended on the side imaging. I wasn't more than 30 yards from the boat ramp. The water was super cold. I mean, we're dropping into the 40s. And so I was trying to find that piece of brush that was set up on that hard to soft bottom edge, preferably that's pushed out into the soft bottom that's closer to the basin, because that is probably where these fish are gonna stack up. So I, as you can see with the side imaging, get a real clear picture, especially on these cold fall days of side imaging, the brush piles, this, these are actually crib piles that stick out. And uh, unfortunately, there weren't the schools of fish that I wanted. There were definitely fish on some of them, but not what I wanted to see. But as you can see on the side imaging and in the 2D, that hard to soft bottom transition on the 2D is that hard red bottom return based on the palette that I'm using that transitioned into a softer yellow or green bottom. Now, if you're using side imaging and down imaging and you're using the same palette that I have, which is kind of the gold and black, the hard return, that bright yellow, bright gold color, that's a hard bottom, sand, gravel, rock, that softer gold, kind of fades into a black, that is your mud, your muck, and your silt. Where that transitions, you're usually gonna find a lot of fish stacked up on that edge during the fall. In the winter time, these crappie are gonna push off into that softer bottom. So as I cruised a bunch of shoreline, I eventually found a group of fish that I wanted to target. They were pushed off the edge a little bit, and that's when I decided to anchor up and set up on those fish. Okay, so in the mail I got this, this tube a while back from ACC Crappy Sticks. Got some new rods. Yes. Uh, what do we got here? Ooh. Got some eight footers, seven and a halfs, my go-to setups. I'm actually gonna be tying on an eight foot rod today. ACC Crappy Sticks. And I also got some other stuff in the mail before I pull that eight foot rod out. Got this guy, Piss of Fun. Got the Piss of Fun. Honor XT 1000 size reel in the mail. It comes with this nice little case. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Look how smooth that is. Link will be in the description for this Piss of Fun Honor XT 1000 size. If you're a multi-species angler, you like going for walleye or bass, 
as well as panfish. I probably would recommend the 2,000 size reel, but if you're looking for just a panfish setup, this 1,000 size reel is perfect. Pitch that pitch. It's super cold today. It is super cold. I'm gonna be putting on 10 pound braid. This is uh, it's a fairly cheap braid that you can find on Amazon. This is, uh, how much? It's 1,000 meters, it's about 1,100 yards of braid. And I think it was, I wanna say it was like 17 bucks. Hercules braid, it's a four strand. It's not the highest of quality in terms of like a Power Pro setup, but it gets the job done. Oh my goodness, that wind does not feel good. What am I doing out here? I should be in a tree stand right now. I will be tomorrow morning. All right, let's get one of these eight footers out. And today I'm gonna try some, uh, actually in Texas we had, we had really good success on hair jigs. Um, so I actually have some hair jigs that were sent to me a while ago. I haven't had a chance to really film anything with them. Fearless Jigs, Fearless Jigs Company. You sent me the 116th and the 132nd. I'm gonna tie, a I'm gonna tie on a double jig setup. Um, I'm not sure which color I'm going to use just yet, but I'm going to tie on a double jig setup and then in Texas we had really good success not only with the hair jig but tipping it with a crappie nibble. So uh, I got something pretty cool with the crappie nibbles I got to show you too. I've got a bunch of stuff in the mail. Just haven't had time to show it off. Our two, two jigs are tied up right there. Double jig setup. And I'm going to tip them with crappie nibbles. A lot of you probably use these throughout most of the year, but during the colder months, it's really hard to get in the jar. Your hands are cold. My hands are freezing right now. No gloves on. So, this company actually sent me this in the mail as well. It looks like a pen. It's called the Bait Pen by Easy Drift. And uh, basically, you're just gonna load the crappie nibbles on this, uh, on this one end here. And then it's got a little slider. It's also got a lanyard attached to it if you uh, don't have pockets like I do on my chest right now. Uh, you can hook it around your neck, but it just slides out one at a time instead of trying to reach in there every time and grab a crappie nibble or two, especially in the colder colder months, especially in the colder months like it is right now and I can't even talk, it's so cold. Whew. Uh, but I'm gonna load a few up here. They recommend loading about a dozen at a time and then only pushing out one at a time when you're trying to hook them up. Basically, all you're going to do, you're going to take your crappie nibble and you're going to put it alongside in just like that. And you keep loading them up just like that. I'm going to load up about a dozen of them. So that's what they will look like in the, in the bait pen. Then you're going to take your little slider piece that it comes with and you're going to put it on, it's got a little pointer end, you can tell I've used this end, and you push that in, and that will slide the bait. See how it slides those baits up? Then you take your cap, screw your cap on, so the bait can't slide off, and this actually also holds your lanyard. So you're basically just going to slide them up just like that, slowly, and one at a time, so they don't get smushed, and see, one will pop out right there. And then you're going to just take your hook and you're going to hook it. And just take your hook like this and you're going to put the one on the hook. Just like that. Bingo. Not the big ones. Just cut them down there, though. It's a baby, baby crappie. There he is. Oh, he came off. Double. 
Well, unfortunately, I didn't put any uh, big fish like this in the boat. Did catch a few small ones, but I did manage to find the big school that will probably be in the same area for the next couple weeks, at least through first ice. That lake is yet to ice up. I just checked it actually this past week, at least fishable ice anyway. It might have a skim layer on there, but not safe to fish. Uh, these fish were pushed up on the southeast side of the lake. The wind had pushed them up. Wind, strong winds out of the northwest. You could hear it in the audio. Temp was actually starting to drop throughout the day. So that strong wind actually pushed up pretty much the entire food chain onto that part of the lake. You could see the entire school on 2D. They were in about 20, 25 feet of water. They are actually pushed off into that soft bottom, that wintering basin, uh, or pretty close to it. If you're just ice fishing already, and you, you didn't miss the opportunity to take the boat out and actually go scan for them, which is a lot easier because you're driving around in open water. Uh, just drill holes, start in probably about 10, 15 feet of water and drill holes to the deepest part. And you can actually swing your transducer in your ice hole to actually kind of scan around to find these schools of fish. So whenever that lake ices up, I can actually get out to that spot and uh, see if I can pull fish like this out of there. But here's my setup that I was using. This is the eight foot ACC crappie sticks that I was using. 1000 size Pisifun Honor XT. Again, if you're a multi-species person, probably go with a 2000 size. The 1000 size is actually pretty good for, it's a, probably a bigger size for the ice fishing setup. I'm not supposed to be showing you this rod just yet, but shh, don't tell anybody. I will be swapping out the 1000 size to put on my ice fishing rods this year. Thanks to Fearless Jigs for sending me the jigs. Um, eight footers, seven and a half eight footers, like they're the perfect multi-purpose jigging casting rods um, that ACC has. But yeah, this is uh, this is the ice fishing rod that ACC just came out with. Again, you're not seeing this, so don't tell anybody. Uh, this is a prototype. We're gonna paint our green pretty quick here. And this is the 500 series ICX-5 that Pissifun has. Most of the ice fishing reels I'll be using are the ICX-5s, but these 1000 sides are actually pretty good if you want to jig for walleye or maybe you want to try to hook in some pike. I will link everything in the video description. Huge thank to ACC, Pissifun, Fearless Jigs for uh, sending me all this stuff in the mail and Easy Drift, the bait pen for the crappie nibbles. Huge thank you to them as well. So hopefully you can use this information to put some fish in the boat or on the ice. Hopefully they're about that size. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on Instagram or Facebook. So if you like these how-to videos, be sure to click that subscribe button, click that bell. Hopefully you can put these tips to good use. Put something like that on the ice this winter. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.